Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 36 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us see what is female heterogamity. Now on similar lines, when we say female heterogamity, that means in females, the sex chromosomes are different. But in males, they are the same. So female hetero, in here, the female sex of the species have two different sex chromosomes. So it is seen in some of the insects like butterflies and moths and it is also seen in some of the reptiles and some birds. So it is not very common, more common is male heterogamity. But it is still seen in some of the insects and reptiles. So in this case what happens, so let us suppose if we take the example of the birds like the chickens. So here what happens? The male and the female, they, the male will have the same set of chromosomes, but the female will be, are going to have different sex chromosomes. So when you talk about, so when you talk about the male, the males will have same chromosomes and they are represented as ZZ. But the females they have different chromosomes. So this is Z and this is W. So this is how the sex chromosomes are represented in case of these birds where female heterogamy is seen. So in this case what will happen if a cross happens between the male and the female so the possibility this can contribute the males can contribute only Z but the females can contribute a Z or a W. So in case of these type of organisms where female heterogamity is present the sex of the offspring is decided by the female because the male will always give a Z so it depends upon the female whether it will give a Z or a W. So if it gives a W, then a female will be formed and if it gives a Z, then a male will be formed. So in these kind of organisms like the chickens or the reptiles, birds or some of these insects like butterflies and moths, it is the female who will decide whether a female uh, offspring will be born or a male offspring will be born. So this is how sex determination basically takes place in different organisms. So let us look at the sex determination specifically in case of human beings. Now as I discussed in human beings we have a total of 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes out of which 22 pairs are autosomes. So starting from the first pair till the 22nd pair they are all autosomes. So autosomes means the homologous chromosomes are exactly identical to each other. And these set of autosomes remain the same in case of males as well as female. The only difference comes with respect to the sex chromosomes. So each cell in the body will have 46 chromosomes out of which 44 will be autosomes and sex chromosomes will be 2. Now these sex chromosomes will be different in case of males and in case of female. So in this case what happens if you consider a human female so the female so in case of a human female she has she is going to have the same sex chromosome. So it, that will be represented by XX. Whereas if you talk about the male, they will have XY. So Y is a little smaller than X. And again, as I said, the sequence of gene is also not exactly similar. So this is how the males will have and this is how the female will have. So let us see how exactly the process of sex determination take place. Now, during the fusion, what will happen? The fusion happens between the male gamete and the female gamete. And we all know that the gametes are haploid. So, the gametes will have a total of 23 chromosomes instead of 46 chromosomes. Right? So, the female will produce the female gamete and the male will produce the male gamete. Right? So, this is the male who has the sex chromosome XY and this is the female who has the sex chromosome XX. Now, what will happen during the process of fertilization? The male will produce the sperm. So, male will produce the sperm and the female will produce the egg. Now, what will be the total number of chromosomes in sperm and egg? So, sperm will have a total of 23 chromosomes. That is 22 autosomes plus 1 sex chromosome. Similarly, the egg will have a total of 23 chromosomes. That is 22 autosomes and 1 sex chromosome. Now, these autosomes do not play any role in determining the sex. The role is played by this sex chromosome. So, basically, the 
male member that is the father will contribute one sex chromosome and the mother will contribute one sex chromosome. Now looking at the sex chromosome of the father and the mother, what do you think the father can contribute? The father has the option of contributing either an X or a Y. So the father can contribute either X or Y. But what can the mother contribute? The mother can contribute only an X. So what will be the sex of the child that depends on what the father has contributed? If the father has contributed X, in that case a girl child will be born. So if the father has contributed X, then what will happen? X and X will combine to form XX, which would mean a girl or a female. If the father contributes a Y, then X and Y will combine to form XY and that would mean a boy or a male child. Now, what is the possibility that the father will contribute a X or a Y? So there is a 50% chance that there is 50% possibility that the father can contribute a X. There is 50% possibility that the father can contribute a Y. So in any pregnancy, there is 50% probability that the child can be a male or a female. And it completely depends upon the sex chromosome which is contributed by the father. So a mother doesn't have any role to play whether the child is going to be a male or a female. So this is how sex is determined in case of human beings. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.